Hi everyone, I'm Radim Musawa and I'm here at the Moroccan World News uh, for the interview about my film. The Moro community in, in the Philippines are basically the uh, mostly the non-Muslims from the southern part of the Philippines. Uh, historically, uh, the majority members of the society in the Philippines are the Moro communities before the Spanish uh, colonizer came in and the American colonizer also followed after the Spanish colonizer. Uh, but now we are down downsize up to 20% of the general population of the Philippines, but mostly residing in the southern part of the Philippines. Actually, the Moro community are experiencing uh, intersecting marginalization in the Philippines. Uh, we have this uh, discrimination towards the indigenous people, and at the same time, the growing uh, Islamophobia in the country. So basically, the Moro communities are experiencing double discrimination on both society and even from the government sector as well. So there are many challenges, but we are slowly uh, fighting uh, for these challenges and uh, the Muslim freedom fighters was able to successfully engage with the Philippine government and we were able to achieve an autonomous government focus to govern the Moro community in the South. Uh, but of course, there are still challenges when it comes to uh, acceptance and tolerance and cultural uh, integration around the Philippines. But I think the Filipinos in general are very much uh, willing to compromise and be united. I think for the last hundred of years, uh, if you're going to check the national scholarly textbook or public textbook in the Philippines about history, uh, we don't, they don't really cover uh, deep enough about the history of the Moro people. It's mostly uh, history that was led by the Christians and the Catholic uh, communities in the Philippines. Uh, it, it is because during the Spanish colonial period and even the American colonial period, they were against of the Moro communities. So, you know, in the history of wars and conquest, it is always the victors that writes the history. But it doesn't mean the history that they have written are accurate and correct. So that's what's happening now. And, and me as a member of the millennial indigenous Moro community in the Philippines, I feel like it is my responsibility because I work in the media, it's my responsibility to fill that void, to fill that gap, to be able to present the country of a new perspective. Well, it's not really a new perspective, but these are perspective, perspective that was ignored and hidden by the national government, by the society, and even during the colonial past of the Philippines. So uh, me doing the documentary knocks closest to my heart, closest to my home. That's why I made this, because I feel like these are the information that the future generation of uh, Moro Filipinos uh, must or should learn. Oh, uh, that's a little bit of a tricky question with the interventions of various uh, communities, which is uh, the Moro and the other indigenous communities and also the Catholic and Christian communities. So identity in general, uh, how would I put this? The Philippines was colonized by Spain. We were attacked by the Dutch Empire from the, uh, in the south, from Indonesia. We were colonized by the Americans. We were attacked by the Japanese. We were controlled by the British Empire. So basically, our identity is fucked up. <laughs> uh, but there are movements, there are certain people that really tried so hard to preserve the history, the culture, and trying to revive it and promote it. And we are still in that path of improving and promotion and reclaiming our lost identity due to this international intervention throughout the history of the Philippines. The good thing with Morocco is that, you know, when you were subjected in some conquest by other countries, but you were able to retain your identity here in Morocco, while in the Philippines, we were subject into minority. So we were not able to preserve and to continue expand our cultural identity and also our faith also in the Philippines. So I think that's the difference there. I think it added uh, a value to who are the Filipinos in general? Because we are a society we're in, we are a little bit lost on where we fit our identity because of the uh, a lot of international interventions throughout the history of the Philippines. So now them knowing about the deep history of, of the Philippines, especially from the people from the South, it gives them a sense of uh, uh, pride that finally they're starting to, 
you know, relocate and know and reclaim their lost history in the past. I think there's a lot of countries all over the world that they are still thriving or, or striving to find their identity and to find their place in this world. And, you know, we, we, we are always in that soul searching of who we are and what we are. And now we have this information available to us. And, and the good thing is that uh, I'm already in communication with the Department of Education in the Philippines. And this film will integrate to their history program that will be... Uh, that they will teach in the primary level in the Philippines, at least the younger generation would know about this. It's not deep enough. There are a lot of part of Philippine history and the Moro history, the indigenous Muslim community uh, that needs to be covered. But at least the film would start the conversation of who we are as a nation. So during my travel all over the Morocco, I, this is my fourth time here in Morocco. So we've been to a lot of places like Isawira, uh, Chef Shawen, in uh, Tangier, and Asila. And I could see a lot of similarities on the designs of your uh, woodcrafts, handcrafts here that is similar from the Moro community in the southern part of the Philippines. And I also wanted to connect that the reason why our indigenous Muslim communities are also called Moros, it was actually imposed and... Uh, uh, started by the Spanish Empire when they colonized the Philippines. So when they see, uh, when they saw indigenous Moro communities, they automatically called them Moros. And like what they did to the people in Morocco and uh, Mauritania, and the uh, uh, and the Spanish Empire used that idea. And even they e they even still have the emblem of Saint James Matamoro in Metro Manila, in the capital, that talks about their crusade in killing the non-believers, which are the Moro, during their, Hispani uh, their conquest in the Philippines. So that talks a lot about the struggle of the indigenous Moro community in, in, in preserving their community, their culture, and even their faith in, in the Philippines. And, and now they are still thriving, and hopefully we will be able to achieve uh, what we have fought for for many years through this film. Yeah, uh, actually most of my documentary films for the last one decade or 10 years is always focused on the idea of human rights. And I think knowing your history is also a human rights. Knowing your past history, knowing who you are, and fighting for what you believe in is actually a human rights uh, uh, mechanism or aspect. And that's where I'm coming from. That's why I made this documentary. But most of my documentary in general really talks about uh, the discrimination and oppression against the minorities and uh, the human rights viol violation that experienced by the minority in the Philippines. So basically, it, it's, it has been in my core values that to promote and protect the human rights, especially of those who are ignored by the constitution, by the law, or by the government, or even by the society or even by their family. Oh, I'm working on a film uh, that is focused on climate change because I always think climate change is also a human rights thing. Uh, but the climate change film, it talks about the uh, indigenous people that depends on the life under the sea. And these are the subgroups of the Moro community. So then again, the communities I'm covering are the sub uh, ethno-linguistic groups in the Philippines uh, that lives in, in the sea. Uh, so those, those are the, that is the film that I've been currently working on and, you know, I have been so grateful the coming here in Morocco. It, it has been a pleasure. I have attended a Moroccan wedding for the first time with my friends, with my team from Asia TV and Africa TV. And Africa TV has been uh, uh, a pillar on trying to transcribe and put an um, Islamic subtitles on, on my film. Because I, I'm having a hard time to speak in Arabic, even if I studied madrasa. Uh, so yeah, it, the total experience and reception of the Moroccan community uh, since my arrival here was really warm. And I thank uh, the world, uh, Moroccan World News for this reception and for this opportunity to be here today.